Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about six topics which are quite important and then I have a lot of people asking me to kind of make a video on this which is uh, what to do after your first program in Canada. So this um, I have like six points. I'm going to upload that document that I'm going to talk about and then you can just go and refer download the document and then keep that as your checklist. So now that you've taken one program and you have to take another one plus program, what, what do you guys have to do? So that's the main question that I've been receiving from a lot of students. Um, so hopefully this should help and let's get started. So the first thing is around this time, which is Jan and Feb, I applied and I started looking for another, the second program, which I'm doing cloud computing. So I came to Canada to Thunder Bay and then I did my health informatics and now I'm doing my second program. So now around this time, Jan and Feb, we have to decide if we are going to take a break, uh, which is going to be a summer break for four months, or are we just going to straight up take up another program, which will start from May intake. So here in Canada, there are like three intakes. That is Jan, May and September. Um, so accordingly, you get to take a break. And now before that, you have to think about a couple of steps. So I'm just going to break down this video into a couple of uh, side headings and points. Hopefully that should help you guys. So the very first thing is which program to take. You should should you take a program with a co-op or without a co-op? So my health informatics, the program, the first one which I did was of eight months and there was no co-op, but we did have a case project in the end of the semester. Uh, where we kind of had to do a presentation, uh, create slides and also create documents, give the reference and everything. So that was pretty much helpful to kind of add the, those details in our resume if I were to look for a job in health informatics. But then I wanted to do another program in order to get that three years of stay back in to just get another education over here in Canada. So I took up another program and I decided that I would be taking a program with co-op uh, for a couple of reasons, which I will be talking about it further. So I took up cloud computing, which is one year. So which is like three months of first, four months of first semester, four months of second semester and additional another third semester, which would be of three to four months. Now, the first point that I have is to take a program with co-op or without co-op and what are its positives, drawbacks of each. Then next I have to take a break with the break or without the break, the next program, which is the four months break, which you get after your first one. The second is to stay in the same. I mean, the third is to stay in the same city or move to a different city for a next program. Like I did, I stayed in Thunder Bay and then I moved to Toronto. So the difference between that and then I have what's after the second program. Like you, you, did, you did the first one, you did the second one as well. And now what, what's next? What, what, what do we do next? So which was also followed by a very important that I wanted to make a separate video, but I just continue in this is that TRV, which is temporary residence uh, visa. Why is it? Why do we have to apply? When to apply and what exactly it is? So now to begin with co-op, if you take a program, your second one, you know, I would say that uh, what are the benefits? If you ask me, I would say that because now I have taken a co-op program, uh, I have a special subject like every Mondays, which is career planning and development, which kind of helps me learn and develop my communication skills. My resume building helps me kind of navigate through LinkedIn, create strong connections, within GBC and also around Ontario. And also we have our own prof who kind of gives us one on one instructions on how we are doing and how can we uh, get a job, especially here in Ontario and Tor in Toronto. And then she gives a feedback with our resumes because we have a lot of assignments and uh, a lot of videos that need to be uploaded for our subject. So that kind of gives us hands on experience on how to give an interview and basically how can we be confident and bold and just ace that and what is there in the job market. So that is an additional point that helped me uh, because I took up another program, which was a co-op program. And then a next point that I would say <clears throat> is that the only drawback that I felt from taking a co-op 
kind of a program is that there's a lot of pressure like i'm in my second sem and i feel there's a lot of stress going on that i have to kind of look for a job before that third semester starts or i would get a work so gbc allows that so i don't know about other colleges but then i would get a work uh, project so i have to work on a project but not a job right so that is kind of a little stressful uh, that without having that credits we will not be getting a degree and we have to wait another year to kind of get a degree because we complete in september but we're graduating in next year june the next one so i'll be graduating next year in june 2025 so i have to wait those couple of months doesn't make a lot of difference but then just to let you know put it out put, i'm just putting it out there so that you can weigh your uh, choices and decide on taking up the co-op or not but i personally felt that this is one of the drawbacks uh, that I kind of have that thing in my mind that I have to land a job or should I take like just be OK with the work project that I get, which is, again, equally as important as the job. And you can add in the resume and things. But I'm still again, I just feel like there's a lot going on already. And then this could have been avoided. So that's just my personal opinion. And then coming to uh, without the co-op. Uh, part of the program suppose I did eight months of health informatics in one and my second program I take up health administration which is again eight months uh, what what are the like drawbacks and what are the pros and cons I would say that you know the very first thing is that I don't have to wait for additional third semester or for my degree for another year so it's fast it's com very fast compared to the other one and then it saves like six months, four months. And there's no kind of a pressure again that you have to look for a job. Also, all the plus points of with co-op is drawbacks without the co-op, right? I mean, uh, you don't really get any trainer, uh, not really getting connected with people or knowing what's going on. Um, but for people who have experiences from home, like back in India, and then they just want to kind of do a degree here i think eight months of program would be good for you guys you don't really have to think about the connections because you're you were experienced so you would know how to kind of look for the job and see what opportunities are there so it wouldn't really make a lot of difference uh so you could go and apply for just eight months program if that's what would you know fit your scenario now coming to the very important thing which i personally was uh, not sure what to do about about a year back is to take a break or not so now because I started in September I graduated in April around May so I had uh, a few months to decide if I'm going to take that break from May to September or if I'm going to start the college again from May immediately so now very first thing before deciding that is to see your financial situation uh, because you have to kind of pay the fees at front within two months after the letter of acceptance. Same as it is how the moment you come to Canada, you get your letter of acceptance, you have to make the payment. It's same for the second program as well, even if you're here or there. That's, you know, that's not a point. So the very first thing is that if you take a break, what are the positive things? And then according to me, I personally feel that it's less stressful. Uh, you can kind of gather that amount, get to know your place, go on trips, maybe even go back home, sp spend some time without studies and focus on that per part time or anything that you're particularly doing. Also kind of utilize this time to clear your licenses, kind of your driving license and other specific exams. If you want to do a security exam or if you want to give a smart serve exam or just to plan what are your next steps over here? What do you want to do? How do you want to grow? See what kind of jobs are available and all. You can really utilize this four months at your fullest if you're not having the stress from college, like assignments and exams and all of that. And then you can also kind of, um, you know, move around, go on trips, see places, just kind of relax and have fun because that's usually summertime. So it'll be really warm and good over here for trips and all. So I personally did that and I enjoyed it. 
uh, I really wanted to take that break and I also moved to a different city so I really used that time to kind of know how Toronto is, how things work here, uh, cleared a couple of exams, looked for certain certificates that I would need uh, based on my uh, pro other programs and stuff that I did. So my personal development. Um, there are a lot of free online courses on YouTube, on Amazon, which we can just go up and uh, you know take tests on that. So you kind of can use that four months break uh, for your personal development as well. Now coming back to taking no break and starting with May. If you do not take the break and if you kind of just start your semester again, one of the best points I feel is what my friends did is uh, they finished from April and they started the college again from May. So they kind of continued the same rhythm that they had. They stayed in the same city. So they had the same connections, same uh, people that, be, that they've been staying with. So they kind of gained experience like one of my friends a dentist so he continued his job in Thunder Bay uh, and now he is in a position to get a full-time job over there because he's been working there for a year also he would be graduating like last December he graduated probably because he started continuously from May and just an eight months program whereas I have to still wait a year um, also you know um, I would say that he was kind of more familiar like you know if you stay in a same city you're more familiar with the places so you don't have to stress a lot about uh what's new how do you manage your costs uh maybe like the groceries it would come out up come up to 50 or 80 dollars and my rent was less in thunder bay but over here it's a lot more expensive compared to thunder bay so those expenses and savings all that kind of uh doesn't play if you're just in the same city and it just continues so you have that momentum and that monotonous kind of uh, life which is also good if you kind of want to just continue it and then you know it's um it's good in a way but i would personally still uh you know move or decide to kind of take up another program after taking a break so that would still be my suggestion but i'd leave the choice to you so the next thing is same city or different city now i personally wanted to move to a different city from toronto because uh thunder bay did have a lot of connections and did have a lot of job opportunities as such uh, i made a lot of I, I made a lot of friends but i wanted to stay in toronto and i wanted to experience like more stuff personally so I decided to move so what happened with that is that I could meet new people and uh, kind of experience new stuff new job new job opportunities and yes it's expensive and I had to kind of resettle in get to know the places how things work um, but it was a fun fun experience so that's the main uh, thing about different city and same city like you kind of leave your friends and you start again soon after eight months when you already are just kind of settling in the new city and then you're again trying to move to a different one and it gets it sometimes gets very um difficult but again it's your choices if it depends on the program that you want to take i wanted to take the specific program in this specific city so it was fun for me I, I wanted to do that uh so i leave the choice to you again you know same city or different one and also if you move to a different place i feel you'll see more uh trip places like you have a lot of fun activities over here uh, a lot of uh, adventures um attractions which were not much i would say around thunder bay so that was exciting to me as well so that is one of the reasons you can kind of move to a different city or a different place other than which you are already now once you're done with your second program and then you've completed your first one uh, the next main thing that comes up is your postgraduate work permit uh which even i have to work on and then we will have job right we would want to kind of land a job know how the job market is and experience that um so for that i would say that resume building is very important because over here we have some system which automatically kind of uh removes the resume which is not up to mark so you have to kind of uh you know 
know what it is and then build a lot of connections you have to attend these gatherings and it meetings or all all that stuff whichever you, your field is so you have to kind of go there and put yourself out there uh distribute your resume see which company is hiring and you have to put in a lot of efforts and give time before you kind of land a job so i keep getting a lot of questions and how's the job market what are the chances that i will get in this particular field irrespective of the field it's all it's all on us uh we kind of have to really try our best and try hard to um kind of receive an interview and also to clear it right so i'm on that journey as well so this is just from my personal experience i'm trying my myself out uh let's see hopefully how it goes um also i would say that if you kind of clear few exams um take up few certifications like if you have any certificates from health informatics with x sql or maybe from project management your professors would be um they could help you to kind of you can just kind of ask them which program would be helpful for you to land a job and maybe you can just go and head and give those exams i personally didn't for health informatics but then i'm planning to do for it um so that would kind of add you you know at par with the other candidates that are applying as well and kind of reduce a little bit of competition um you that's really helpful so i personally will be doing that myself so i suggest that you guys go ahead and do that as well now the very important thing that i personally experienced recently is that my visa stamp is expired so i just have my study permit after 8 months of my program because my program was of 8 months my visa was for a year so now i don't have a visa to enter canada again if i leave the country that is why i need a trv which is a temporary res- temporary residence visa So what this does is it helps me come back to Canada and for that we need certain documents it's a $100 it's just an application as you do it using your IRCC portal your credentials GC key and stuff and then you need documents like your passport you need your study permit you need your enrollment of next semester because I'm still studying here uh if you're working then you'll need a work um details of your work like you are employed over your employment letter so like that i need i i had to submit the enrollment letter showing that i have another semester here and then uh that's the reason that i want to be studying and i need this visa to kind of come back to the country um also we have to show uh that we are financially independent and we can kind of come back to canada and we can support ourselves to the travel to the trip so we have to show around 10000 dollars in our bank balance so we need the bank statements and then we need to fill fill that imm form that we have which we get it online on the ircc website so we need to fill that as well and we have to fill all the details and that would help as well so it's a couple of documents depending on uh what kind of uh, uh, you know which step or where you are over here in canada like if you are looking for work and then you're working and then you're applying for trv it would of course require a set of different documents but me as a student applying for trv if i want to go back home and again come back to canada and continue with my third sem this is what i would need and this is what i've submitted so this is this this was something that i personally did not pay a lot of attention to because i thought that okay i have my study permit and i'm just continuing over here i'm not going home so i wouldn't need a trv but uh this would be a good option to have it handy and get it done as soon as possible right so you also have to see the delivery time how long does it take before you you plan your trip and then uh also where do you want to want it to be delivered over here in canada so those were a couple of things that uh i kind of researched and looked into it that how many days would it take for me to get my visa stamped and where should i go and get it and all of that details so hopefully uh you would be able to decide which which program you want to take up and what you want to do next and if you want to take a break move to a different city but these are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind and it's very important that you do it before april because with cap coming in you have a lot of uh strict rules that you cannot apply to public colleges it has to be government colleges it has to be university universities excuse me so you kind of have to see the competition that's going on and not wait for another 6 months you do not want to waste time so 
uh, apply as soon as possible. See if you get a seat and enrollment letter as soon as possible and then just get your admissions because you don't want to wait in that waiting queue. Uh, my couple of my friends did that last year and they had a chance that they had to go back home and you, you don't want that. So just do it ASAP. Decide which program you want to do. Honestly, I would just give one suggestion that if you're if you're planning to stick to the same field that you were doing, suppose I was doing health and I just wanted to stick to it, I would have just taken up any of the health related field and not think much about it. Uh, or I would certainly think that how is the job market and would I be able to do well in this? But I also have an experience. So, so it's very difficult for me to individually assess what's your background because i keep getting a lot of uh, comments on my account that i've done this 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 do you have job in that if i do this particular program so <laughs> i cannot be giving a straight one word answer for that because there's a lot of things that goes um so you personally have to think that how what you want to do right so you have to have a plan you have to make up a plan before coming here that this is the field that i want to do and i want to try it out um and this is what i would continue and how much of efforts are you trying to put into that and what time are you trying to put in that this are these are all the couple of questions that you want to ask yourself that how passionate about you are about this program so it is absolutely not my field but i was really excited and i was ready to put in that effort so i took up it right and i'm doing well i mean <laughs> i have to say it's good it's going good i'm loving it and i really want to make a career in it uh so i'm looking forward for it so i hope that you guys find your passion and uh, enjoy what you're doing, right? Just enjoy the stay, enjoy the programs. Uh, also, if you have any questions anytime, I do reply to emails on askmarimfatima at gmail.com and I also reply to my Instagram messages, which is again, Ask Mariam Fatima, my credentials. Uh, you can look up for a lot of fun activities and stuff that I keep doing around, going around, you know, just to the tour here and there for the place just to see how it is the weather and a couple of other things um so all the best guys hopefully i've answered your question just be mindful of these couple of things and there is another video that i've uploaded where you can compare the courses you can see what actual courses and programs you have and go in depth research about it and see if you're giving eight months and if you're giving this specific one year or whatever time what are you going to actually learn from it if is that if that is of your interest and then compare it with different college what a different college has to offer for the same program so i utilize that video see how to navigate each portal every college has a different kind of uh, options but certainly give that certain time write it down write the name of the colleges write the program see the pros and cons spend some time because you will be having a career out of this right so i would definitely say that have a checklist compare the colleges and use that video that i've uploaded to kind of see how to navigate through the colleges one more suggestion that i have is that i personally went on maps clicked on street view which is again following up after my uh like just in a couple of few seconds that how do you do that and then use that to see how the college looks like use that street view to kind of see through the satellite how actually it is over there like the surroundings do you have groceries over there like to just go walmart if it's close by uh what are the rent prices go to marketplace look up how much is the rent out there and if that is some if that place kind of excites you to kind of spend the rest of your one year or eight months or maybe more go and look for yourself just as you're being there then just seeing the portal pictures that would not help um do that that's really helpful because i literally had to go see Casoloma, how it looks how is it around how's george brown of course we don't get to see inside of it but we do see like outside how it is because most colleges or universities wouldn't allow uh, us to take a video or a YouTube of the place, how the campus looks and all. And honestly, it doesn't really make a lot of difference how the campus is unless the professors are really good and the education is good. So that doesn't matter how it is. Uh, what matters is how much help is this 
college or this university kind of providing you to make a career out of it and you're actually learning something and it's just not namesake and couple of other stuffs which you would already be knowing but yeah just to put it out there so all the very best i've put down the uh, checklist or the points that i just spoke hopefully this should help you guys so let me know hit on comment and then send me any email if you guys need any help yeah all the best